A year and a half ago, I compared Arctic's MX-5 thermal paste to their extremely popular MX-4 paste. MX-4 remained my thermal paste of choice, despite a half degree temperature drop with the use of MX-5. Because it is very easy to apply due to low viscosity. MX-5 certainly performed well, but it was very viscous and sticky in comparison to MX-4. Arctic has now discontinued MX-5, apparently due to issues with consistency, and they've recently launched a new thermal paste called MX-6. Just like with MX-5, I decided to give MX-6 a try and compare it to MX-4 side by side to see if it offers any improvement. Based on the technical specifications, MX-6 has a higher viscosity and higher density than MX-4. They both appear very similar, with a dull gray color. I prefer to manually spread thermal paste across a CPU's surface to make sure that it coats the entire heat spreader. Be careful with Intel's 12th and 13th generation CPUs, however. They can be bent due to the force applied by the stock locking mechanism leading to less than ideal contact with the cooler in the middle of the CPU. I use bending correction frames like this one from Thermalrite to prevent the CPU from bending. It is clear that the MX6 paste is more viscous, and it does not spread as easily as MX4, but it is better than MX5 in this regard. For my test setup, I am using an open-air PC frame called the Monolith from Cooltech. Cooltech sent this PC frame to me for review, and I'll do a separate video on the Monolith later. This PC included the Intel Core i9-12900K CPU, Asus ROG Strix B660i gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, Noctua NHP1 CPU cooler, and an Intel Arc A380 graphics card with a fanless Arctic Accelero S1 GPU cooler. I used half-hour Prime95 torture tests to stress the system and hardware info to collect thermal data. The CPU was tested at 15 watt power limit intervals between 35 watts and 125 watts. I performed the exact same tests with MX4 MX6 and MX5 for comparison. The data I am presenting here are the maximum 1 minute average core temperatures at the end of each half hour stress test. The ambient room temperature was maintained at between 17.5 and 18 degrees Celsius. The room temperature was tracked and subtracted from the CPU temperatures to equalize results. For the Intel i9 CPU, temperatures were slightly lower overall with the MX5 and MX6 pastes. The average temperature drop from MX4 was 0.3 degrees for MX5 and 0.2 degrees for MX6. But there was something interesting here. MX4 seemed to perform better at the lower power end of the data, and MX5 and MX6 seemed to perform better at the higher end where it really matters. So, despite just a 0.2 or 0.3 degree overall temperature drop, at above 100 watts, the average temperature drop from MX4 was 0.7 degrees for MX5 and 1.2 degrees for MX6. If I look at this data in a different way, and use trend lines to try to estimate the power limit at which I would expect to see thermal throttling at 100 degrees in a 25 degree room, I get 132 watts for MX4, 133 watts for MX5, and 134 watts for MX6. It's certainly not a huge difference, but Arctic's MX6 does look like it offers a benefit when compared to their MX4 paste. The benefit is potentially a little more than 1 degree lower temperatures. Like MX5, MX6 is not as fluid as MX4, but it doesn't have the same stickiness of MX5. The higher viscosity may help in some situations, such as with direct dye cooling. 
on Amazon in the US at the time of this video, 2 grams of MX4 costs $4.79, and 2 grams of MX6 costs $6.79. 4 grams of MX4 costs $5.30, and 4 grams of MX6 costs $8.49. 8 grams of MX4 costs $6.65, and 8 grams of MX6 costs $11.99. Personally, I wouldn't consider anything less than one full degree lower to be significant, and while MX5 didn't quite reach that, MX6 did manage to end up at more than one degree lower than MX4 at the high end. The fluidness of MX4 still draws me to MX4, but I think I'll start keeping some MX6 in my workshop as well. To get photos and test results of every one of my PC builds, check out my Patreon page, like the video, and subscribe for more fanless PC content, and visit FullySilentPCs.com if you are interested in purchasing your own custom-built fanless PC.